All right, students, welcome to this edition of Mr. Derek Flips Out. So, what am I flipping out about today? Well, I'm flipping out about prime factorization. Today, I'm going to show you how to find the prime factors of any number using what's called a factor tree. Now, you learned about factors with Ms. Balcazar, and then you learned about prime numbers with Ms. Balcazar and composite numbers. You know what those are by now. So we're going to kind of put these together and we're going to find out how to get prime factors. So just like we always do in class, let's go over our objective for the lesson today, or tonight rather, since you're at home. So here's our mission objective for today. I will use factor trees to find the prime factors of a number. Now, if you need to read that over again, if you want to read it out loud and kind of have your family wonder what you're doing, go ahead and read it again. I will use factor trees to find the prime factors of a number. All right, so before we get started with our main lesson, I want you to go ahead and put me on pause and make sure you have a pencil and either your math notebook or a piece of paper. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so hopefully now you're ready, you have a pencil and a notebook or a piece of paper, anything that works. Now remember, I want to see those tomorrow, so make sure you bring those to class with you. Okay, let's get started. So, prime factorization. Now, I can take any number, and I'm going to use what's called a factor tree to get the prime factors of that number. And a factor tree is basically, it's a diagram that helps us get the prime factors of a number. Let's start with a number that's a nice, even number, 24. All right. So, it's kind of like a backwards tree, because usually trees kind of go up. Well, this tree kind of goes down. Maybe you can think of it as roots or something. So, what we're going to take is 24. Now, you have to think of any factor pair for 24 that's not 1 and 24, because that won't really help us. So, let's take 6 times 4, okay? So 6 times 4 equals 24. Now, 6 and 4 are not prime numbers, so I have to keep going and taking these numbers apart. So one way I can make 6 is 3 times 2. And one way I can make 4 is 2 times 2. Now, I've got my prime factors. 3 is prime. 2 is prime, 2 is prime, and 2 is prime. So all of these are prime numbers. So I've just gotten to my prime factorization of 24, but I'm not quite done. The last part that I want to do is I take these numbers and I want to make them in a nice package. Okay, mathematicians, we don't like all this. This is messy, okay? So I want to take these numbers and I want to put them together using exponents. So in this case, I have 2 times 2 times 2, and how can I write that without having to put all these numbers? Exponents. So how I write that is taking 3 times 2 to the third power. There's my exponent, so it's 3 times 2 cubed, or 3 times 2 to the third power. That is my prime factorization. So let's do another one. Now. The cool thing about prime factorization is that it will work with any number and there's more than one way to get it right. I love that when there's more than one way to get the right answer. So let's take the number 40. All right. Now think of the different factor pairs of 40, the different types ways to make 40. I can think of three. So I'm going to show you three different ways to get the prime factorization of 40 and that all of them are right. First way to get 40, all right, simple, 2 times 20. There's a start, okay? Another way to get 40, 8 times 5. And another way to get 40, 4 times 10. Three different ways to get to prime factors. And I'm going to show you that they're all correct because we're all going to get the prime factorization. All right, so let's go over here to the 2 times 20 path. Well, 2 is already prime. Now I'm going to take apart 20. 2 times 10. I got another prime factor there. 
And then to make 10 is 2 times 5. I got two more prime factors. So I'm going to put them together. I've got 2 times 2 times 2, which is the same as 2 to the third power, or 2 cubed, times 5. All right. Beautiful, gorgeous. Love it. Now, let's see if the same works over here. All right. So, 8 times 5. Well, 5 is already prime, so we're good there. Now, how do I break apart 8? 2 times 4. I got another prime factor there. How do we break apart 4? 2 times 2. All right, I think we're on track. Now I have three 2s and a 5. I'm going to wrap them in the same package with my exponent. 2 to the third power, since I have 2 times 2 times 2, times 5. Perfect, wonderful package. Now let's move over here. Am I going to get the same thing? I don't know. How do I break apart 4? 2 times 2. How do I break apart 10? 2 times 5. All right. I have 1, 2, 3 2's, and 1 5. I get 2 to the third power times 5. I get the same answer each time. I get the same prime factorization each time, no matter which path I decide to take. Now, on the next one, we're going to show you another example, and then you guys are going to try some on your own. All right, let's take 18. There's two ways to make 18. Write these down and think of the two ways to make 18. Go ahead. If you need to pause me, that's great. Figure it out. Okay, welcome back. So, we have one way that I can think of is 2 times 9. Another way is 6 times 3. Different, but both correct. And I'm going to show you why. 2 is already prime. There we go. I have to break apart 9 because it is not prime. It is composite. 3 times 3. I've got 2 times 3 times 3. How do I write it? 2 times 3 squared. Beautiful, simple, all done. Am I going to get the same over here? Let's see. All right. 3 is already prime. How do I break apart 6? Let's try 2 times 3. All right. I have 2 times 3 times 3. Let's write it down. 2 times 3. 3 squared. Same factors, different ways to get there. All right, let's try the next one. What about 50? Try this one on your own. 50. How do you make 50? How do you break apart 50? Well, there's two different ways to do it. Try one of them. Okay, one way I know how to do it, it's the simplest way, is 5 times 10. You could also go for 2 times 25. You'll get the same factors, but this is an easy way to do it. 5 times 10. 5 is already prime. I'm good to go. Break apart 10. 5 times 2. I've got a prime. I've got a prime. I am good to go. All I need to do is wrap it up. 5 squared, or 5 to the second power, because I've got two fives times 2. Awesome. All right, we've got one more. Try 33. We haven't done any odd numbers yet, so try 33. There's only one way that I know of to make 33. How are you going to make 33? Think about it. If you need to pause me, that's great. Figure it out. All right. The only way I know how to make 33 is 3 times 11. Now this one's a little special. This is the largest prime number that we've gotten so far. 11 is prime, and 3 is prime. We've reached prime factorization with those two factors. If a number can't be broken down further, then that's it. 
So the prime factorization of 33 is 3 times 11. All right, students. Awesome job today. Let's go over our mission objective one more time. Remember, if you don't feel like you've reached your mission objective, you can always go back and watch sections or watch the whole thing as many times as you want. But hopefully you've gotten it by now, so let's take a look. I will use factor trees to find the prime factors of a number. You did it. Hopefully you understand it and you're ready to go tomorrow. Now, tomorrow I want you to bring what you worked on today. I want you to bring your remembering what, of what we did today. And you're going to have a chance to teach other students what you learned. And they're going to actually grade you on how well you did. So, please make sure you're ready for tomorrow. Awesome job. Remember, this was your homework for tonight. Lucky you. Just make sure you bring your notebook of what we did today. And have a great night, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks a lot.